In this video, we're going to talk about permutations. Permutations are the different the number of ways of ordering a set of elements. Right? So we want to order elements in a row. So for example, if we have a set that contains a, b, and c, there are going to be six permutations. Let's work them out. We could say a, b, c. A, C, B, C, B, A, C, A, B, B, A, C, B, C, A. See what I did is I started, I picked A as the first letter, and then there's only two choices for the other two, and I did that for all three letters. Okay, so we have six permutations of the set A, B, C. Now recall, elements in a set have no order, right? So you can think of this as being how many ways a permutations are how many ways can we order a set? Okay. So in a set with n elements, how many permutations are there? Well, we want to choose an element, choose to, uh, an element to write first. So we're going to choose first value, and I'm going to call this n. There are n ways to do it, right? We have n elements. There's n ways to choose the first value. To choose the second value, well, We've already taken one, so there's going to be n minus one ways of choosing that second value. Um, we can keep going. We can choose the third value. There's going to be n minus two ways of doing that. If we keep going on this, we finally get to our choose the last value. How many ways are there of choosing the last value? Well, out of the n elements, all but one of them are, have been used. So there's only one way to choose the last element. So the number of permutations of a set of n elements is going to be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times all the way down to 1. And if you recall, this has a name. This is called n factorial. So there are n factorial, different number of permutations in a set of n elements. And we can go back to this previous page to confirm it. We had three elements, and three factorial is three times two times one, three times two is six, times one is one is six. So that matches. We have six permutations of that set. So let's see another example. Here we're going to talk about anagrams. If you don't know what an anagram is, it's a way of reordering the letters in a word or sentence. And before there was TV, um, this was actually a very popular game for people. So an example of this is that dormitory, an anagram of dormitory is dirty room. Here's another funny one, conversation. The letters can be reorganized in conversation to be voices rant on, and so on. So these are sort of traditional anagrams, but an anagram doesn't actually have to make sense. All an anagram means is it reordering of the letters in the, in the word or sentence. So these two are funny because we could reorder them in a certain way to get, you know, get kind of a, a joke, a quib about it. But for computer, we just want to look at any way we can organize these anagrams. So for computer, there are eight letters.
And the anagram, number of anagrams, are just going to be how many ways can we, we organize those eight letters. So we're going to have eight factorial. And if you pull out your calculator or work it out, you're going to get that this is 40,320 possible permutations, mutations, or anagrams of the word computer. So here's kind of a fun uh, probability problem. We know how many an anagrams uh, there are of the word computer. What is the probability of uh, a random value being chosen from that anagram pile, the set of anagrams from a random word being chosen from that set, to have the letters C and O remain together in order? So I, I recommend you pause this for a minute and try to work it out. It's kind of a fun puzzle. So if you've given it a try, the answer is actually probably easier than what you try. This, this seems like it's going to be a really hard problem, but it's really not. So let's work it out. So there are 8 factorial equals 40,320 possible permutations. of all eight letters. We want to know how many of them have the C and O remaining together in order. So, to keep the C and O together in order, we have, we can think of it as um, having only seven letters. And these letters are going to be C, O, M, P, U, T, E, and R. All right, so by combining C and O together, it can count sort of as a single letter, and we know that there will then be seven factorial ways of doing that. So there's seven factorial ways to do this. Well, let's figure out the probability now. So the probability that C, O remain together. Well, our event space is going to be seven factorial values in size. And our sample space is eight factorial in size. And I want to show you an interesting trick to do this so that you don't have to do use a calculator because some of these big values can can get very big in factorial. I'm going to write these out by the definition. So this is 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. There's technically a 1 there, but that doesn't really do anything. And this is 8 factorial times, excuse me, 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. Right, and we can then look, and a lot of these values are going to cancel out. And we're left with this equaling, so this equals 1 over 8, which is 12.5%. So there's a 12.5% chance that if you had a computer program that created every possible permutation of the words of the letters in the word computer, there's a 12.5% of them will keep the C and the O together in order. So if you were to grab a random permutation 
out of that pot, you have a 12.5% chance of having the C and O together. Not that this really matters in any way, but it's just kind of an interesting puzzle. So here's another um, puzzle. We have a guy, Mr. Jones, who has 10 books that he wants to put on his bookshelf. And he wants to put the, uh, the, he has four mathematics books, three chemistry books, two history books, and one language book. And he wants to arrange his books so that the books of the same subject are together on the shelf. So he wants all his, if we imagine his bookshelf here, he might want all of the, the four mathematics books together. And then the three chemistry books. And then maybe one, the, the history book. And then finally the two, uh, excuse me, one language, and then finally the two history books. So he wants to group them together. And within the group, he doesn't care how they're ordered. So they're not by alphabet or anything. He just wants to have to group them by subject. Okay, so the question becomes, how many ways can he do this? Well, give it a try and then come back. Okay, hopefully you gave it a try. This You're going to learn this material a lot faster and a lot better if you try these examples along with me. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to have four factorial ways to organize math books, three factorial ways to organize chemistry, two factorial ways to organize history, one way, which is also one factorial, to organize the language books. So is that all? Is it 4 factorial times 3 factorial times 2 factorial times 1? Not quite, because we also have 4 factorial ways of organizing the categories. That is, do we want the mathematics books first and then chemistry? Or maybe we want chemistry books first and then mathematics. All right, so this is a little interesting. It's a little tricky. We're going to have 4 factorial times 3 factorial. And again, we're using the multiplication rule here because the way I organize my math books tells me nothing about how I should organize chemistry. The, the two types are independent of one another. That's 2 factorial. I'm going to leave the 1 out but we also have the four factorial ways of organizing the categories. And if you were to work all this out, you would get that this is 6,912 possible ways to organize the books using his organizational strategy. Okay, so I hope you got that number, and if you didn't, I hope you understand why, and that that makes sense. So this is doing the permutations, and this is a combination of the permutation rules plus the multiplication rules.